There are a few different cut files to choose from in the Lots of Letters cut file series by Melanie Menchinger. I store all of my Gina K Designs cut files in a particular folder on my computer. It makes it very easy to find them when I need them. I'm going to show you what the Lots of Letters cut files look like. There are the LOL circles, which is the Lots of Letters circles, the LOL squares, and the LOL rounded squares. The file I'm going to work with today are the LOL circles. So I'm going to open that one up, and I'm going to position it so that you can see it clearly here on the screen. And I'm also going to shrink it down just a little bit by clicking on the minus magnifying glass. There we go. Now you can see the whole file. As you can see, there are different groupings of circles. And those groupings will create cutouts on this card base, or this card front, that contains this cute little scalloped edge. Now you can pick and choose which grouping you'd like to use for your card front. For example, if you wanted to use this one, you would click on it and drag it onto the card front. And then it would cut out this entire card front and it would cut this opening here for you to stamp letters inside to create custom greetings. Now obviously you don't need all of these cutouts to create your card front. So you're going to pick which ones will work to make the greeting that you want to make. You can also save these once they're cut out from inside your card, or you can use them to make cutouts where you'd actually stamp on this piece and then adhere that piece to your card front, almost like a cute little circular frame for a word or words. In order to remove the ones that you don't want so your silhouette won't cut them, just click on them like I've clicked on this one and press the delete key. Now you can also click on several of them at a time by holding the shift button down and once you've clicked on a few of them then you can hit the delete key and that will delete groups of them. I'm going to continue to delete the ones that I don't want for my card project but I do want to show you something else here that you can do. Let's say you like this particular design, but that won't fit on your card. You can easily click on Object, Rotate, and then you can rotate it by 90 degrees. That will allow you to position it on your card if it's facing in this direction, or if you wanted to make it a diagonal, you can custom rotate it as well. There's rotating options here so that you can custom rotate it by clicking on exactly what you want. So let's say you want it to be 30 degrees. You can click on that. So you might want to do a little diagonal going across a piece and you just have to play with it until it's exactly where you want it. I'm going to delete that now. Okay. And I'm going to delete these last two. And this is the one I'm going to use for my project. Now I'm going to click on the card front and move that up to the top, or close to the top, and then I'm going to move this one out of the way. I want this card to be centered, or at least I want to see where the center of the card would be so I can position my circular grouping. And the way to do that is find the center of the card, which is right there in the middle of that scallop. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it closer. 
and you can click on the card and move that so that that is right on a line. And then you can make sure that it's moved up so that it's on that top line. Now you know that on either side of this center line here, you have an even amount of card front. Now I'm going to click on this grouping of circles and position it where I want it to cut on my card. That looks fairly centered. And I want to leave room up top to add a ribbon and a button. Now this is the perfect size for the word thanks, T-H-A-N-K-S. But what if you wanted to spell out something like thanks friend? Well, you can add a second row by clicking on the design, clicking on edit, and then copy, and then edit again, and then paste. Then drag that down to exactly where you want it. Now my card has two rows of cutouts and when I mount this piece onto a piece of white cardstock, all through these little circular cutouts will be white cardstock where I can stamp my designs, my alphabets, and my shapes from the lots of letters stamp set. Now if you like to make more than one card at a time, you can click on all the parts of this card, all three, by holding the shift key down while you're clicking and then you can cl click on Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. And then you can grab this one and drag it down underneath. And now you can cut two cards at one time on your sheet of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. But I'm only going to cut one today, so I'm going to delete that. because I can use the rest of the red cardstock for a different project. So the only thing left to do, once you've got your card laid out exactly the way you want, is to click on File, and then Send to Silhouette. Now I don't have my Silhouette hooked up to my computer right now. That's why I have this red warning box. You won't have that red warning box as long as your silhouette is connected to your computer with a USB cord and the silhouette is turned on. And before you cut, make sure that you load the appropriate cardstock onto your cutting mat and load the cutting mat into the silhouette machine. Now I want to show you one more thing you can do. Let's say you don't want circles. I'm going to delete those but you would like some rounded squares. I'm going to open the rounded square file and let me make that smaller. So this particular card front has rounded edges, but let's say I just want to take this one and I want to stamp the word love on the front of my scalloped card. So I've highlighted the one I want and I'm going to click copy, and then I'm going to close this file by clicking on the X down here. No. And now I'm going to click Edit and Paste. Now I can use the rounded squares along with the scalloped card front, so I'm mixing those two files together. So you can mix and match parts of different silhouette files with parts of other silhouette files just by copying and pasting the different elements that you want to blend together. So I'm going to just click on undo and then undo again a couple times here. Until I go back to my original layout. There we go. And now this layout here that I've created is all ready to be cut with my 
two groupings of circles and room for a ribbon and a button up top. The last thing to do is to click on the word cut and the silhouette will do the rest.